Hey guys, I'm happy you're here. We're going to graph this rational function. The first thing I want to do is give you an idea of what these graphs can look like. Obviously, this does not include every way that a rational function can look, but this can give you a good idea of what you're looking for. So there we go. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, when we graph these, we follow some very specific steps, which we love steps. So the first thing we're going to do is factor. Then we're going to find our asymptotes, vertical and horizontal or slant. And we're also going to check for holes. Then we're going to figure out our X and Y intercepts. And then we're just going to figure out the general shape of our graph using our preferred method. We'll talk about that once we get there. So first thing I'm going to do is factor. Obviously the top doesn't need to be factored, but the bottom can be. I will link a factoring review in the corner if you need it. I'm just going to tell you right here, right now, that the bottom factors to x plus 4 times x minus 7. All right, step one done. The next thing we're going to do is find our asymptotes and check for holes. A hole in your graph is formed if, pretend instead of a 1 on the top, there was an x plus 4 on the top which would cause those to cancel each other out. If you have something on top and bottom that cancel when you're graphing these, that is where you a hole is formed in your graph. So this example does not have a hole, but I will link an example in the corner that does have one if you want to see that. So we checked for holes, but there weren't any. Next thing we're going to look for is our vertical asymptotes. These are formed where your denominator could be equal to zero. We do not even mess with zeros in denominators. So to figure out your vertical asymptote, we're going to set our denominator equal to zero to see where we can't have our graph, if that makes sense. So I'm going to have x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 7 equals 0. So I would subtract 4 from both sides and get x equals negative 4. And add 7 to both sides to get x equals 7. Those are my vertical asymptotes. And I represent those on my graph with a dotted line. So at x equals 7 and at x equals negative 4. Your graph will not cross these lines. Here we go. There's 1. And at negative four. <laughs> Sometimes where the numbers are placed, I'm like worried I'm going to be one off, but we're good. This is at negative four. Okay. Now, you'll see how if I were to pick negative four or seven to plug in for X, it would make my denominator zero and that would be undefined. So I can't have a graph there. So that's why those guys are there. The next thing I'm going to do is figure out my horizontal or slant asymptote. You won't have both. And to find these, we follow some rules. Yes, just give me the rules and I'll follow them. They're there. So what you need to know is these did not just come out of thin air. Someone didn't just make them up. They have a reason why they're the rules. If you want to know why, I'll link a video in the corner. For these, we look at our degree, which would be the, uh, the biggest exponent on top and bottom. So on bottom, my biggest exponent, my degree is 2. Now on top, you're like, there's just a 1 up there. What does that even mean? So this could be 1 times x to the 0 power, right? Stay with me. Anything to the 0 power is just 1, which would be 1 times 1, which is 1. So basically all I'm saying is your degree on top is 0. All right? So we compare these. If the top degree is greater than the bottom degree, you don't have a horizontal asymptote, you're going to check for a slant. If they're equal, you divide leading coefficients. If the top is less than the bottom, which is ours, right? Zero is less than two. Then your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So that is ours. Our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. And we do not have a slant asymptote in this example. Okay, again, I'm going to represent this on my graph with a dotted line and it's going to be along the x-axis actually so here we go 
Something to know about horizontal and slant asymptotes that might bug you a little, but it'll be okay, is they can actually be crossed. Horizontal and slant ones can be. Vertical ones, absolutely not. But horizontal and slant can be crossed sometimes. Now, I know what you might be thinking because I totally thought it too. What? Why do we even have them if they can be crossed? That's dumb. That's what I thought. But guess what, guys? They still help us figure out the shape of our graph and they still help us understand where our graph is approaching. So although they can be crossed sometimes, they are still helpful. All right. Next thing we're going to do is figure out our x intercepts. So to find my x intercept, I am going to set y equal to zero. So I'm going to have zero equals one over x squared minus three x minus 28. Okay. Now to solve this, I wish I'd written that over. It's fine. To solve this, I would go ahead and multiply both sides by this, right? By the x squared minus 3x minus 28. And I would multiply this side by 2. I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but I'm multiplying my, it by that. But then I end up with 0 equals 1, which last time I checked, 0 does not equal 1. So what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that there is no x-intercept. My graph is not going to cross the x-axis. Oh, that's exciting and different. All right, so we don't have an x-intercept, but let's see if we have a y-intercept. So for my y-intercept, we go ahead and set x equal to zero. So I'm going to have y equals one over, I'm going to do this one. They're the same. You could plug it into either one. Zero squared minus three times zero, minus 28. So that leaves me with one over, these all end up being zero, and then I've just got negative 28. Ooh, this looks a little scary. So <laughs> when I plugged in zero for x, I got negative 1 28th for y. All right, all that tells me is that my graph will cross the y-axis just barely below zero. It's not going to cross zero, but it's going to be just below zero. Now, keep in mind your graph does not have to be perfect. You don't have to cut this into 28 pieces. Just have it be barely below zero. All right, from here, what else do I need to know? <laughs> I've done all these steps. Now I need to figure out the general shape of my graph. Now, there are a couple of options that you can do here. The first thing you can do is just pick some points to the left of this asymptote, pick some points between these two asymptotes, and pick some points to the right of this asymptote for x, get your y's, and plot those points. That is one option. Another option is to apply what we know about functions and about asymptotes. So I know that my graph crosses right here and I know it's not going to cross the x-axis. So I know that it's not going to go up this way. I do know it's going to approach these vertical asymptotes, but it won't cross the x-axis. So that tells me it's going to approach those vertical asymptotes in this direction since we can't cross the x-axis. Oh gosh, pretend like I drew that really good. Okay, I know it's going to go down because it can't go up because then I would cross the x-axis. Okay, now what? I have represented between these two asymptotes, but what about over here and over here? So we have a couple options. Again, I already said this. Pick a point, plug it in for x, get your y. But what I'm actually going to do is something we call sign analysis, and maybe you have done this. Hold on, let me find a little card. Here we go. We are going to do some sign analysis because I know my graph will not cross the x-axis. I've said that like 12 times, sorry. So that tells me my graph is either going to hug both these asymptotes up here like that or down here like that, all right? 
So to figure that out, I really just need to know when I plug in one of these numbers, will my answer be positive or negative? That's all I need to know. So let's go ahead and plug in a negative 10, but I am not concerned about what my actual numerical answer is. I just wanna know if my answer is gonna be positive or negative. So let's see how that works. If I plug in a negative 10 to this, my top is just a one, it's positive, right? And on bottom, I would have negative 10 plus four, which would give me a negative and negative 10 minus seven, which would also give me a negative. So on top, I would still have positive. On bottom, I would have a negative times a negative, which would give me a positive. And a positive divided by a positive gives me a positive. So when I plug in negative 10, I don't know the exact number. I could figure it out if I wanted to, but I know the answer is positive. So I know that my graph is going to hug these asymptotes in the positive region of my graph. All right, now over here. We got the middle, we just wanna know over here. So I wanna know when I plug in 10, will my answer be positive or negative? Am I going to be hugging the asymptotes down here or up here? So let's do sign analysis again. I'm just gonna pick 10. You could pick any number over there. You could pick 100 if you really wanted to. But I'm gonna pick 10. So again, on top, we just have a one, which is positive. On bottom, I've got 10 plus four, which would be positive, and 10 minus seven, which would also be positive. And all those positives are gonna give me a positive. So when I plug in 10, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's positive. So I know these guys are going to hug those asymptotes in the positive direction. Now, if you don't like that or it feels a little too vague for you, go ahead and get the actual points. But there we go, there's our graph. Isn't that awesome looking? It is. I hope this made sense. If you need some more examples, I will link a whole playlist for you. But I also wanted to say, you thought I was done. I thought I was done, but I forgot to say. The last optional step is to go ahead and plug this into a graphing calculator and make sure you're on the right track. Make sure that your graphing calculator matches your hand-drawn graph and make adjustments if you maybe mess something up, okay? All right, hope this made sense. Check out that playlist if you need to. Thanks.